I want to end with a few other extremes now that are based on temperature and pressure. If we think about the extremes of cold, there's no better place to go than Antarctica. And you might be surprised to realize that even in this environment, you have microorganisms thriving in the crust. And these organisms are called psychrophiles. And their ability to grow is dependent upon dust from winds carrying uh, nutrients picked up from the continents surrounding Antarctica, South America, Australia, Africa that reach Antarctica, deposit their dust, and fertilize these upper crusts of the ice where we have intrepid pioneer organisms that are able to utilize these nutrients and grow, even in these very cold regimes. So another extreme is that of temperature and pressure. And there's no better environment in which to observe this than at the bottom of the ocean, in environments where we have hydrothermal vents that are releasing nutrients into the deep. And here's an example of one of these vents. It's called a black smoker because the nutrients that it releases, including manganese and iron, often precipitate in the conditions of the oceans at these sites such that they look black. Now, around these vents, there's abundant life, really extraordinary life, not just microbial life, but giant tube worms and fish and other macroscopic organisms. Okay, so the ability of all of this abundant life to be in this environment crucially depends upon the activities of microorganisms that are chemosynthetic, that are able to grow by the oxidation of sulfur and other compounds that you have present in this environment, and couple that oxidation of these reduced substrates to the fixation of CO2 into biomass. And this is at the base of the food chain that then sustains the growth of other marine organisms, such as these tube worms. And here you see an example of that. And these beautiful tube worms, if you cut them open and you look at one of uh, their organs, called the trophosome, within these organs are bacterial symbionts that are doing the process that I just mentioned. So my final example that I'll end with is one that might be the most familiar to you if you've ever done any PCR in molecular biology. So most of you have heard of the enzyme TAC polymerase. And this polymerase is what allows us to do an amplification reaction uh, when we're doing PCR. Now, this enzyme TAC derives from a bacterium called Thermus aquaticus. That's where the TAC comes from. The T is from the thermus and the AC from aquaticus. And this is a thermophile that was isolated in Yellowstone at a hot spring many decades ago, and it was presciently realized by Kerry Mullis and others that the enzymes contained within it could be useful for various biotechnological applications because they wouldn't denature at the temperatures that would kill most other types of cells. So these thermophiles are a very uh, fascinating group of organisms whose molecular adaptations uh, include not only um, uh, DNA polymerases, but also a wide variety of other enzymes that might be of industrial use.